Today, I'm going to show you how to 3D print a pin. Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome to my studio. So I've been doing this project quite a bit. I love making these. They are 3D printed pins in sort of the enamel style. They're obviously not metal. This is a cheap alternative that can be made at home, but I really like creating these. And I've done a number of shorts showing me doing the UV resin coating on it and people seem to kind of like those. And I had a subscriber ask me, hey, how do you make these? Have you done a long form video of it? So I thought this week I would show you guys how I would create these enamel pins from starting with a simple design, making some adjustments in Illustrator, then taking it over to Shaper, and then eventually coloring it and printing it in Bamboo Studio. Then I do a final finish with UV resin, as well as applying the pin back, obviously. Now for this design, you are going to need a 3D printer that can handle doing multiple colors. Basically, you'll need an AMS unit. In the case that I'm going to do, you're actually going to need two AMS units because that enables me to print a design in eight colors. And I thought if I'm going to show you guys how to do it, I may as well show you guys how to do it with as many colors as I can do. But enough chit chat. Let me show you how this process works. So typically when I start with an enamel pin design, I'm usually converting one of my sticker designs over into an enamel pin. Now I have a number of designs that I've done recently that I was thinking about and I was kind of looking at them and I was initially thinking, oh, let's do the cinnamon roll, but you know what? Let's do the taco. Let's turn the taco into an enamel pin. So this is the sticker design that I've created originally. And what I need to do is just kind of get it ready for converting it into a CAD file. Now, this design is a little more complicated than what I usually do because I actually want to try and bring in some of the different colors that I've got for the lettuce and the tomato. So what I'm going to do to do that is because I'm going to need some simpler lines to differentiate where the colors are. I'm going to send two copies over to Illustrator. Typically when I'm working with a pen and I'm not really adding these additional colors on like the lettuce and the tomato, I would typically just send over a black and white sketch. And to do that, I would usually just kind of turn off all of the colors and so that you would just get this. And this would convert to a CAD file very easily. But since I also want to add in all of the colors that I've got here for some of the definition on the tomato and the lettuce, which I think I can get with my 3D printer, if I'm using my 0.2 millimeter nozzle, I do want to send those lines over, but I wanna be able to just create simple lines with them. I don't want those lines to be sent to a illustrator because I'm going to get the thickness of that lines and that will make things more complicated. So what I really am just gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate the texture a little bit and then clean up any additional lines that I feel like might be too much. For instance, like taking out the additional highlights that I don't need just to simplify things. So what I'll do is I will duplicate the group. That way I always have an extra copy. And then I will just go in and pretty much just kind of erase anything that I really don't need. This is what I'm going to take over into Adobe Illustrator. These are the lines that I want to be able to see when I'm going to do my tracing just to make life easy. And then I'm going to have just the black and white lines, which are gonna be my borders that are gonna be done in a gold color. I'm gonna leave this alone. This is what's gonna get traced. So I'm actually gonna export two different copies. I'm gonna export this just black and white version, and then I'm going to export one with, with my colors. That way I can bring that over and see the lines that I need to create. So I'm gonna send these over to Adobe Illustrator and I'll show you where I go from there. I'm over here in Adobe Illustrator and I've brought in my taco drawings. Now I've brought in two, as you can see, you can't really tell if I were to hide the top one cause it's my black and white, but if I were to hide the bottom one, you can see these are all my lines all nice and neat. And then I've got this one underneath. This one is really just to help me trace my lines. In fact, I'm actually going to set the opacity for this one down quite a bit, just enough so that I can see it and make sort of my trace lines. And I'm gonna work with this one instead. So this is my black and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to image trace. And this came over pretty nicely. I've got nice, smooth, clean lines. I like how this turned out. And then I am going to expand it and I've got everything I need. And then I'm also going to go Object, Path, Simplify. I actually think I like the original and it's not changing it out too many in terms of points. 120 versus 108 points I don't think is very much. So there really aren't too many issues with the auto tracing. So this is my path that I'm gonna use again for creating the cat. And I want this all to be filled in essentially to make my borders. 
So what it will actually end up looking like, if I take my group here and I flip them, it's creating these lines here. That's what's being traced and sent over to my CAD software. What I need to do is add some additional single lines, and that is where we're going to separate out these additional colors that I want to mark. To do that, I'm going to zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to grab my pen. You can use the pencil as well, whichever one kind of works better for you. I'm going to use the pen since I'm on my computer. And then I'm just going to connect to the path, and I'm just going to kind of trace my little lettuce here until I get to the end of the path. And then you use escape to close. So now I have all those lines created. I skipped ahead because I didn't think you wanted to watch me swear at anchor points for 30 minutes. But I have all of those lines drawn so that I have the areas that I want to be able to color on my pin. So I have everything set and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and just sort of group it together as a compound path. So I'm gonna do command eight. So it's all one big path just to clean things up and then I'll hide my image. So this is gonna go over into my CAD software. But before I actually go and export this, I do want to actually size it to the size that I need. Really quickly, I am gonna go ahead and delete the image just to clean things up. And then I've got my compound path. This is over in millimeters. So I want my pin to be about, let's say 52 millimeters. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go file, export, I'm gonna save it as a DXF and I'm gonna save it as a taco pin, replace a previous version that I did. And all of your default settings should be okay. So I'll click okay. So this is all set and sized correctly. So I'm gonna bring this over into Shaper 3D and we're gonna start turning this into the model for my enamel pin. So I'm over here in Shaper 3D and I've got a new window open. So I'm gonna to go to add, I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna import my DXF file and it's gonna come in and it looks pretty good. All the lines look good. And size-wise it came in correctly, so I'm gonna click okay. So now I'm just gonna work on pulling up all of my shapes so that I can create my design. And I just select my border and I'm gonna drag and I'm gonna extrude this. I do my pins about two millimeters thick in terms of the border. So that's gonna pull up. And then I'm gonna start working on all of my shapes on the inside. So for instance, in here, I've got my taco. I'm gonna bring this up about 1.5. And then for my eyes and my mouth, I'm gonna bring this up 1.75. So it's a little bit higher, but it's still under that too. And I'm gonna do that with most of my colors. I'll do usually two different levels. So this is my pin. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my sketch. And I've got all these bodies, so typically what I will do is I'll select all of them, drop them into this folder where I've got all the bodies. And then I take all of them and I typically will union them. I've got these unioned as much as I can. Sometimes, no matter what I do, they don't always want to union together, but I've got them as one big group and it will color okay. And what I can do is I'm now going to export. I'm going to export as a 3MF. And now I'm gonna take this over into Shaper 3D and get it colored and set up for printing. Now, when I bring it over, obviously we had, you know, multiple bodies. And to make the print a little easier and a little bit quicker, I do want to take my shape and just go ahead and mesh Boolean. And it says it's unable to perform it, but it actually successfully did it. So I do all of that. That kind of takes care of any merging issues that I might've had over in Shaper. And now I am ready to paint my model. Typically, I paint my model, honestly, just using the fill method. I've got all of my colors loaded, and I just start going, and I just start clicking where I want my colors to go. Occasionally, sometimes sections will split apart a little bit there, but for the most part, everything's pretty much just kind of an easy fill paint method. And 
piece of taco over here. And then my eyeballs. Now one thing you do want to keep in mind is making sure you grab the edges as well. So make sure you're looking at your model from all different angles. Almost got them all. Just missing these here. There. And now I'm completely painted. Now for me, I have a preset standard that I have set up already, which is with the 0.2 nozzle. I do 0.12 millimeter thickness. I have the surfaces ironed a little bit just to kind of smooth them out. I also have my prime tower, usually disabled. I don't know why I leave it on. So that's my little pin. And then my flushing volumes are usually set to a multiplier of about 0.6 to 0.5. So that's my pin. I'll go to slice it. And it does change multiple times. That is the one downside. And as you can see, it's changing and it's definitely purging a lot more as a result. So one of the things I do just try and optimize, obviously I do the 0.6 multiplier, but then what I also factor in then is how many of these pins can I get onto a plate? Which in this case, I can get quite a few on this plate. If I were to fill the bed with copies, I can do a lot of tacos at once. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 20. I could do 28 tacos on a plate if I really wanted to. And then if I do that and I slice the plate because the purge material amount does not change, things suddenly become a much better ratio. So that is something I take into consideration when I'm printing the pens. So it definitely would be a long print, but that is kind of how I set up my enamel pins. I'm not really wanting to do that many right now, but I do typically clone and do about nine or so to a plate. So it's about a six and a half hour print. So that's kind of how I set up the pins. So I'm gonna send these to print and I'll show you how they look once they come out. And then the next step, which is finishing up the pins by coating them with resin and attaching a pin back. Now all that's really left at this point is to just coat the pins with a layer of UV resin. So you could use two-part resin, certainly. I just like using UV. And I just use the hard type that I find on Amazon. This one's got decent reviews. Always make sure you're wearing gloves when you're working with any UV resin and make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated space. If you have any bubbles in your UV resin, you can gently wave a lighter over the surface to try and get them to pop so that they won't be there when things cure. Once I'm happy with it, a lot of times I'll let the pen sit for a little while. And I think it's the nature because 3D print material is somewhat porous that occasionally I will still end up with bubbles later on when I go to cure it with a UV light. So you can either let it cure in the sun for a little bit or you can let it sit. But once you're ready to cure, I just set it under the UV light for a couple minutes and go from there. All that's left to do is put a back on it. I've tried various glues, but honestly, I just keep coming back to standard super glue. I've tried various things. I definitely don't recommend epoxy 6000. There is some clear Gorilla Glue that I also use with 3D prints that works pretty well. The super glue seems to work the best with the pin backs. If I'm going to have a pin back fail, it's more likely because the pin backing comes off rather than the actual pin itself. And that is how I make my 3D printed enamel pins. And there you have it a 3D printed taco pen. I hope this video was useful for you guys. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. As always, if you can tap the like and subscribe button to help push this video out to other people, I certainly would appreciate it. If you're interested in purchasing any of these pins, I do have them on my website, which is listed in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.